Okay, so as we're losing sunlight, I'm doing some comparison on portable solar systems that are purpose-built portable solar systems. Uh, power systems, microgrid, that type of a thing. And micro, micro, when we're talking about camping and tent use, emergency use type stuff. Uh, show you around what I've laid on the hood of the truck right here is a power film solar. I believe this one's around the 15 watts, uh, 13, 15 watts and a power film silver, solar. One of the things is, is this was made to be foldable, uh, it's rollable, so it's an amorphous panel, very thin film, amorphous panel, it's going to make power in a, uh, even a, a not so bright environment because it has a lot of surface area, but there are low production cells, and, and part of that was to make them thin and flexible, it just had to be that way. These things supposedly are amorphous too, but they behave a lot more like um, uh, polycrystalline and that uh, you'll get a fair amount of power out of a smaller surface area if it's got a good bright sunlight. This particular one, Thunderbolt Solar from Harbor Freight, and one of the things you'll notice on a lot of these foldable ones is they have grommets on the corners, stuff you could use zip ties or bungees or string or cord to kind of stretch it out and angle it toward the sun, which is very important with the smaller the solar panels and the smaller the solar array, the more important it is to make sure that's, that's going to get your maximum power by pointing it at the sun. Uh, you also pay a lot for portability and you pay a lot for build quality. On larger power systems, you, you tend just to want to look at the performance numbers. You know, more performance, more money. With small portable outfits, you there, there's a lot to do with build quality, name brand, and some other issues that are going to affect the price. For example, with this 15 watt panel right here, these are nearly $200, about 180 on Amazon. The company Powerfilm Solar also uses a relatively proprietary plug system. It's very similar to a marine OEM two prong. They set the polarity at the factory, so it's, it's very difficult to integrate other types of plug systems with this. And then, oddly enough, they, they give you the cigarette lighter plug so that you would plug things directly into it. It's, it there's a separate charge controller they have. It's about $75. Spending $75 on a charge controller to run a 15-watt panel is, is borderline ridiculous on high cost. The thing is, it uses their proprietary plug system and is supposedly weatherproof. Uh, so I bought this panel used for about 80 bucks. I would be really hard put to pay 200 for a new one at retail. But for high-end campers traveling the world, the numbers don't matter as much as performance, and that's what they're going to roll with. It just expect to goof around with cables and wires if you're going to integrate this into a a more extensive system. Goal Zero is well established in the market with several different sizes of solar panels. They also have the dubious honor of being the most expensive uh, panels and power system compared to performance of anybody on the market right now. But the build quality is very high on these things. This is what you would expect to see on a shelf, let's say at the real good store or high-end retailers that want to do portable solar. Uh, very high quality, little magnetic closures here. They come with uh, the, the small Nomad is a relatively popular Road Warrior type thing. That's not going to be enough power to charge a laptop. It's basically similar to this Thunderbolt solar uh, unit here. The output on these is USB only. You're, you're 5.5 volt USB only. Goal Zero has their own power bank stick right here, and it has the uh, basically male side USB. I think we're losing a little daylight here. This end is the female side USB, so you can plug things into this that are USB and then run them. To run this as a power system, you would plug this into one of these cords and then plug your item into the battery. You, you tend not to want to run things directly off the solar panel because the solar panel output is going to be irregular. For example, when a cloud goes overhead, uh, something shades the panel momentarily. That can trigger and untrigger the charging feature on the device. I had a hell of a time charging Apple devices with these things. Every time something passes in, the, in view, it, it caused the iPad or iPhone to go in and out of charging mode. 
if I filter everything through a battery, then the power, the battery and the, and the circuitry in these lithium ion batteries will smooth out that power flow. So with the Gold Zero Nomad, um, they usually are going to come a package with at least one power stick. Although, there's room in a package and there's definitely, you can, you can have more than one. The other thing about these is that you can get a flashlight head for the power stick so that it doubles as a flashlight. It just screws on there, doubles as an LED flashlight, nice and strong. And it, of course, will stay up and running. Now, personally, I've had some pretty good luck with some other equipment. I sent one of these on a missionary trip to Africa with some people. Uh, that it was a Harbor Freight device. They did just fine. My understanding is there were some other people using the Gold Zero. They were happy with that too. It's just that the Harbor Freight one is half the money. Now the thing about the Gold Zero is a very robust construction. Now there's been some changes in the models over the uh, last couple of years. Most of the construction is the same, and you can see that this little zippered pouch could hold more than one of the battery units. But some have this uh, little box here, others have the thing with the built-in cables. If you have a choice between getting the two, get the ones with the built-in cables. These have a little, now this is the, the one plug, right, the male plug, there's a little female plug there. You could actually daisy chain these together and then increase your power production that way they will run parallel. That's all taken care of inside the little box. So you can daisy chain the Nomad 3.5s and again it matches that, you know, two of them, three of them, four of them, you know, seven, eight, ten watts. Now if you daisy chain, let's say, more than five of these things together, four or five of them together, you're going to start overloading circuitry. But if you daisy chain two or three, I don't think you're going to have that problem at all. Um, probably daisy chain up to four. Now this does have the plugs for that. It just it they're separate cords. You you get this as a separate item, and I, and I think the daisy chaining plug was a separate accessory. With this, it's kind of built in. It actually doesn't come off that thing. So you know we kind of like the newer model a little bit more. The battery banks work the same between the new models and the old models. And then you know you've got the flashlight head accessory, which you may or may not find in one. Then we have the 12 volt Goal Zero. I believe they're billing this as a 13 watt. Again, we've got the cords that look like they're plug and play. They're actually tethered into this, and this is where things get a little bit more complex. What's happening on this is we've got this plug, which looks very similar to an MC4, I believe, but it's not. It's a little bit different. So this one is a 12 volt output and we have a cigarette lighter female plug for that 12 volt output. Again, I've discussed these in other videos, extremely inefficient electrical connections in these things. These were, these were designed for cars in the 1930s to light cigars and a little lighter you'd push in, it would heat up, the heat would cause it to pop out. It was never meant to be a continuous power transfer type of a thing. It's just, it's just a goofball thing that the way the automotive industry ended up with because he started out in a world of car cigarette lighters. So we've got a 12 volt outlet. We've got a USB output. And again, this is going to put out enough USB power that will actually charge stuff up. Um, again, I would rather see that filtered through some sort of a power bank or battery pack. Not absolutely necessary, but you really want to see it. And then we've got some other plugs. Um, this one is a uh, daisy chain plug. And then this is another charging plug for daisy chaining at 12 volts. So we can daisy chain it at 12 volts, so we can daisy chain it at the USB voltage. I would say that if you're going to daisy chain these, daisy chain them at 12 volts. One of the reasons these are more expensive is because it has actually much more complex electronics happening in here. So as you would daisy chain these at 12 volts, it's uh, I don't think you really accomplish anything by connecting that together. So you generally leave these separate. And then all of your accessories store in a little bag. Now with the Gold Zero you've got these fancy magnetic closures, kind of neat stuff. And um, they're highly regarded in the industry. 
you can get deals on these uh, overstock.com you get them on eBay that sort of a thing but they're they're not even counterfeit that will be the of the of a similar quality and, and again it has to do with the build quality on gold zero stuff over here is an interesting thing I personally don't like these a whole lot but a friend of mine really swears by them this is a Sun King Pro system now what the Sun King Pro system does relatively conventional RV house type build on a solar panel aluminum frame conventional stuff just very small it's a 3.3 uh, watt, uh, 5.8 volt, which is basically your USB type power. And its power output is very comparable to one of these Gold Zero Nomads. They, th this is like vehicle mobile, truck mobile. I don't think this is really a backpacker item. I think this is truck camping type stuff. Okay, so we're losing a little light, but I've got light right here. So this is the Sun King Pro. And I'm going to show a couple little things on here before we lose a lot of light. Notice it's semi-transparent plastic. The battery pack is built into it. We open this up. We've got our USB plugs. And we've got the plug. This is where it plugs in from the solar panel. Now, if you look at this, in a way this is positioned on top, this, this thing is not really weatherproof. Okay, this is made to be in your tent, indoors, undercover. It's not weatherproof. The solar panel itself, relatively weather resistant. I wouldn't go scuba diving with it, but if you leave it out in the rain, I don't think you're going to have a problem. You've got a long cord to reach between your solar panel and your power head unit uh, lantern type thing. And then you've got a plug. Now, I did some double and triple checking. These plugs look very similar to the ones used on the Gold Zero stuff, but they're not the same. It's not compatible. So what you would normally do is you would have this out in the sun, you'd plug it in here, and you've got enough cordage, you've got enough distance that you can run this all the way back to your tent. Um, it, it is what it is, and one of the advantages is that it's a complete system. I would say it's for an improved and placed camp. It's, it's not really as mobile as a Goal Zero. Goal Zero's top of the food chain for ward, Road Warrior stuff. And again, like I mentioned earlier, I sent one of these uh, harbor freight units on an expedition with some people in Africa, and a, they were perfectly happy with it, really happy with it, kind of the stars at a camp. This unit, I actually bought used from an adventurer who had spent a lot of time in the Australian art outback, apparently, according to him, and uh, perfectly happy with it, perfectly happy with it, uh, ran his laptop off of that. Now, personally... If I'm in a 12 volt power only, I would want to run that through a battery, um, some sort of a battery to kind of even out.